Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Zombies Love Bacon Podcast, episode 92. There's a lot of episodes. Good luck if you ever want to try and listen to them all. I don't actually recommend you listen to them all. Just listen to the newer ones. They're much better than the older ones. Um, the older ones go back to, like, lockdown. Um, we do make fun of people that were, you know, every, every man and his dog started a podcast during lockdown. But, and again, so did we. So I guess we're part of the problem. You'll definitely come across a lot of creeps. Where have all these cancelable opinions? <laughs> you guys, you bring it to 60 feet. That was a picture of my boots. Let's see, that's the title of the podcast. They're rock hard. <laughs> that's great advice. Welcome on in, Shelby. Hi. And Tame is here also. Ooh. I hear Tame. Hello? Yo, yo. <laughs> Two minutes into the podcast, he's already he's out. I'm fucking talking to you people. I'm out. I can't be bothered. Nah, nah, nah. Technical I'm difficulties I'm immediately. That's fine. It's it's been it's it's a, I've been technically I've been streaming all day, but it's um it's been a day of technical difficulties. I spent. I'm just I'm just gonna rant immediately. I Are spent. You gonna rant about Futurama. Yes, because it's yes. not it's not the first time. It's the second time. Well, like, technically the third time that's fucked me. Right? Because we did a long time ago. We're like we're gonna do a Futurama stream. It'll be funny. We'll go back and visit this funny game for this great TV show. And then we plugged everything in. I remember I, was, I had to. I got called into work, coming back from work, ran home, plugged everything in, and it just didn't work. And we're like, "Yeah, uh, what the fuck?" And so I ordered all these cables and stuff, and then we just sort. It just became too hard, and I'm just like, "I'm not, I'm not even going to bother." Cables eventually turned up. We threw it all in the cupboard, and then we we put it as a charity milestone because people were like, "Hey, let's do." If you, we did the Family Guy game, which was average. Um, so we then we're like, well, "Check out the F Futurama game," you know. I plugged everything in and I got it with all the new cables and everything last night. And I'm like, A, it looks like ass. Like, it just looked like absolute. I'm sorry, my ancient console does not <laughs> live up to your standards. God. It does. It like it fucking. I remember playing Xbox and going, wow, look how cool it looks. It looked like absolute uh, uh, ass. Yeah. And I was yeah. playing with component video for those who know yeah. that knows what that is. You're probably older than your average man. Um, anyway. I managed to get it to pop up on the computer, but I had a four second delay. So it was just mm -hmm. unplayable. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. how hard is it going to be to fucking try and emulate this game? Right. I have the console. I have the game. I just can't get this in there to show people, basically. Uh, it wasn't hard at all. <laughs> but also the way that that generation, the, like the PlayStation 3, so, so Xbox and PS2 and PlayStation 3 and all that, horrible generation to emulate on pc and half the games don't work properly blah 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 so I went through all the process looked up a heap of fucking guides did everything there so i was up till like 1 a.m get it all set up and i'm like you know what it runs this will do we'll go for it fired up the stream fired up the game i'm like it's a bit and janky it was hot garbage like it's a bit janky guys but we'll, you know it's fine when you're playing it's fine what what i failed to think about and what i failed to take any kind of thing is maybe the game's Shit, maybe it's not worth playing. Yeah, I, it was. It was very difficult. Apparently, it had really bad reviews. The controls are horrible. the The fucking animation's horrible. It looks like trash, and it's fucking just. Yeah, there's no like lock on aim or anything, but it's all shooting mechanics with horrible controls. So you're just missing constantly, and you get one hit and sent back and restart the game. Game over. And I'm just like, this is harder than fucking Dark Souls. <laughs> and I've spent so long trying to boot this fucker up and it wasn't even worth it. It wasn't even a good game. You know, at least when we played Simpsons Hit and Run, it's like, yeah, this is painful to play, but at least it's a good game. <laughs> it's a good game. Yeah. I have to yeah. say, though, you know, messing. I brought all my consoles out from under the bed this week and I put them on shelves. Like, they're out, out in the daylight. They exist. And uh, the Xbox being one of them and, you know, stacking up all my consoles. I have to say, the original Xbox is the one console on that shelf that I'm convinced you could kill somebody with. It's fucking oh, huge. It is yeah, heavy. It is huge. It, it, like, I was worried about collapsing the shelves by putting it on them. I, it's, it's, it's nuts. And, um, and you know, I, I would love to see having one of those, the silver clear ones. I think they look sick. But, yeah, definitely, definitely can kill somebody with that. It's not really much like x like xbox came out and then like it had really obscure sort of titles but there was nothing yeah. that was like a, a killer i remember we got an xbox and i think i played conquers reloaded on it which is conquers bad fair day from nintendo 64 just reloaded it's rebooted 
and like that was it, I think. And like I think we played a bit of Forza or something like that. I, I don't even remember. It was like nothing titles. But I, I, like when I look at it now, because on that generation, I was playing with the GameCube, and the GameCube's tiny. <laughs> it's a tiny little lunchbox compared to. Oh, yeah, it's it's nothing. To it's, the Xbox, the Xbox is just. A... And even the actual internals of a of a GameCube are tiny. It's yeah. much smaller than even the housing, and it's kind of insane. Yeah, it's kind of nuts. So anyway, That's why I love seeing those builds these days of people doing being like, I made a handheld e- GameCube, or I made a handheld Wii, and they're making this tiny little device that's like the size of a Game Boy now with all the internals just jammed in there. It's great. Yeah, it's cool. It's, it's like I've seen a few where people will combine them all together. So they like they literally just have a PlayStation that has GameCube and whatever, and you can just you know you just have one big box that sits on your desk, desk, plug it in, HDMI in the back, you're done. Like that's neat. That's that's I fucking cool. I want money cool. to do those things. That, that's rich yeah. people talk. Anyway, speaking of retro consoles, we'll segue straight into what the internet's mad about this week. Um, basically, uh, there was a kid who traded in his gaming collection or uh, thus, you know. That was not a kid. That was a grown-ass man making an adult mistake. He fucked up. He's not an adult. He's a baby. He's a fucking idiot. He was was a grown man. (laughs) Totally fucked up, man. Making baby decisions. That's what that was. So he had the Pokemon N64. Yeah, had Pokemon N64 uh, in box. He had the the Nintendo NES. He had the yeah the Nintendo Entertainment System. He also had some games, which I'm just trying to see. He had Goldeneye, Mario Kart, Mario 64. So he had like four Nintendo 64 games. So four Nintendo 64 games, a Pikachu Nintendo 64, and a fucking NES inbox, 700 bucks. And then he went and got a he got a Switch. First of all, the Switch is a good console, but it's not as good as that. All right, and that shit. They're making switches every day. They're not making like, the fucking Pikachu Nintendo 64 anymore, mate. You're not getting that back anytime soon. Maybe worth noting got the, the limited edition Tears Doesn't of matter. Kingdom. He had the limited edition Nintendo 64. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Man, I saw that. I'm just like, fucking, that's disgusting. I hate that. It's like, I, I barely trade shit in as it is, but it's like, that shit's it's, irreplaceable. It's not, you, you, that is fucking... It's so hard to get that stuff in that uh, condition in a collection, and it is sad. But I guess like it's his decision. But uh, you know, he I want to see more. For- oh, okay, so this is the, this is what I want to know because this is what, this is how it works, right? They give them a fraction of what it's worth, and then they put yeah. it on the shelf. So, what price do you reckon they're selling that Nintendo sixty four for? Because it's not going to be four hundred dollars. Because this is the thing: people are like, oh no, he got good value for it because you sell them for like four hundred bucks. Maybe? No, no, five hundred, five hundred or more. They would, that Nintendo 64 is eight hundred dollars on the shelf. I guarantee it. That they, yeah, it, they is, will, it is a small retro game store. If so you I can see you got to think like price. cash converters, right? You got to think like mm-hmm. cashies. You know, when you go in cashies and you go, "Whoa, why are they trying to get fucking nine hundred dollars for this Xbox?" You know, it's because they brought it for four hundred. So it's paid four hundred bucks for that Nintendo 64. It's gone for eight hundred plus. Oh, yeah. you're gonna be kicking yourself because then if they ever sell it, then you're like, "Well, fuck! I could have sold that for eight hundred bucks." Simple as that. Mm-hmm. So fucking crazy. I think I think the funniest, well, not the funniest, it's just the weirdest thing I ever saw at Cashies was they had the Apple II, the, like the little square-looking box thing the, that was in. Oh, the little tiny thing. Yeah, two grand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Uh-huh. What? <laughs> it's a collector's item, obviously. I'm like, fucking I, hell. The thing does I nothing. Think- the only thing we ever used that for in school was... Uh, there was an Olympics where you type to see how fast you type. That was it. <gasps> but, yeah, yeah, I did something like that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a really fast typing speed. Just want to put that out there. I'm, you know, I'm super fast well, on the keyboard. How fast? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, actually, you are because uh, I, I, I often think Shelby's sending an angry message. But no, she's just typing normally. Just, <laughs> I'm like, fuck it, hell. Yeah. Yeah, oftentimes if I'm in like a meeting and I'm typing at the same time and talking and they're just like, are you, what, are you angry at somebody? I'm like, yes. No. I, mean- <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have to confess, this goes back to like, I think last week I was saying, oh yeah, I played role playing games all the time growing up. You know, I started with like Saddle Club role play when I was, you know, seven years old pretending to be a horse on the forum somewhere. And then I went into like Star Wars role play when I was 12 on Habba Hotel. That's where I picked up all the speed. You had to touch type out every single move that you did in a lightsaber fight. And, that, and we had rules and regulations about how long those sentences had to be. That's how I learned how to type very fast. You know, you know what's interesting though? Because we're the, the, the age that we're in now, t- touch typing is not as important as people that can type fast on their phone. 
Mm. There's some people in particular, like some people that will message me, for example, and I'll be like, they'll be like, "Hey man, are you going to this thing?" And I'm like, and I'll be like, "Yeah, probably." Uh, and then I start writing the next sentence, and I'll get like a fucking text wall come back. I'm like, "How did you type that so fast?" And I can't even put my reply in anymore because you've changed the subject three times already. But you're just having a conversation with yourself. I'm like, "How do you type that fast?" I have do you fat just fingers. Type on the on the phone. What the fuck's Wait, a gesture like, type? <laughs> well, when you you swipe from letter to letter and don't lift your finger, and then it it just vaguely gets what word you're trying to say. That's called no. I don't know. Do what is that? What is it's, that? Okay, I'll have to show you later. That's it's kind of weird, but it's how I type really fast on the phone. I mean, I fuck up the letters already, and it doesn't get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone this thinks one, I spell this one bad. will approximate what you mean and will actually usually get the right result. It doesn't know what I mean. <laughs> okay, well, maybe maybe we need to develop an AI that just speaks your language. I was literally trying to message someone last night and they were messaging me back so quickly. I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm just going to... I just said emojis instead. I'm becoming an old <laughs> man. <laughs> That's right. yeah, people prefer to it swipe to type and uh, it's, it's faster, but a lot of people still don't use it, which is strange. Is it what all the kids are doing? Is that... Maybe. There's the Zoomers. Zoomer I'll show thing. you. This is where the age gap becomes really apparent between us. <laughs> what do you mean? I was like, I think he's just losing his shit. No, I just mean like uh, I'm, you know, faster and better on the phone than you, I guess. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I, I see think I is. probably use my phone for more things than you do as well. All right. Well, you don't know how to use a control pad, so I win. <laughs> a control pad? I use a control pad now. You, can't, you always complain that you can't aim or you can't fucking do half the shit. I'm getting better at it. Hitman has taught me how to use a control pad. I can, I can do things. Aim assist, bro. That's that's all you need. Also, I want to bring up because I don't, I don't know. Tame, have you played Hitman Absolution? No, I haven't. But I watched Play, it the other night. That's fucking that's the edgy good. One. It's yeah. very edgy. Yeah, it's for not. It's not for children. That one. That's uh. Yep. It's the PS3 one. It, a while ago, I, I no, already knew they, about they, it because I. There is HD version you can get for PC yes. and PS5. It's and so. $90, though. You don't want it's to do that. It's $90 at the But it'll go on yeah. special eventually. One day. I'd pick it up. I'm going to pick it up. If it goes cheap, I'm going to pick it up. It's uh, it, You know what? It was the closest I've come to playing a John Wick like game. Like It was John Wick the game. Because stealth is optional. Like You can literally just fucking mow down pricks constantly in that game. And the game's just like, oh, well, I guess you're going loud. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no going loud. <laughs> it has definitely some more complications and things like that and like variables than well you can't hitman use your been playing it you can't use focus constantly like you can in mm. the new hitman it, but to charge it up is easy but also you can do like a, a you can do focus shooting so you go slow-mo and then you target everyone and then it does like a quick animation and shoots them all real quick and i'm like Almost like and fall out a little bit yeah basically yeah. just made me feel like john wick <laughs> um, which apparently it's also a bit edgier in the tone as well. It's yeah, yeah. They also apparently they are working on a trying to get a John Wick game made. So. I'm keen for that. I hope they do a good oh, job. That'll be gangster. So, and, a, and a, they announced John Wick Five is coming. I told you he's not dead. They can't put his name on it if he's dead. Why? He's not dead. Why would you say that, Shelby? The he's people that dead. haven't I've... seen any of the movie, yeah, and shall not we? Spoiling it's been, anything. It's been out for months now, and people, it's it's like a. They should have watched it already. To be yeah. honest, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it's 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 already like you know discussed very loudly everywhere. So I waited two months. I can say backpedaling. Look at it go. <laughs> no, I'm not backpedaling. <laughs> I don't even know how to ride a bike. I can't front pedal. I can't backpedal either. <laughs> uh, but yes, no. Well, they haven't said they haven't said we're not Keanu's back, and that could be a prequel. Maybe he has a son off. called John, and it's John Wick Five. No, I don't think the they'll dog. do that. I don't think they'll do that. But it's funny because the other thing was um, the new Indiana Jones movie that's coming out. For some reason, like IGN put out a review already, <laughs> but only IGN. But they also tore it the shreds and said it was absolute shit, um, oh. which is not really a surprise. But it's also, the Dial of Destiny, isn't it? Yeah, but then also. Um, because I did the whole, I don't know if you saw the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, I think it was the last one. Right? I haven't actually watched any Indiana Jones. Ever. This is going to upset you. I don't know how that's possible. It was like on I've TV twice any. a week, every week. <laughs> no, it's weird. Oh my God. How? How do you not see a single Indiana Jones? I don't know. It just never, never, never got my interest and never had anyone to show me or try to show me or 
So I never showed any organic interest myself either. So Don't we have a special happen. edition DVD pack over here of the entire Indiana Jones franchise? That sounds like <laughs> that sounds like a house. Yeah, the shelf is full of things I haven't looked at. <laughs> so you're like, this is a good idea to get this. But do you I was know actually it? interested in seeing Dial of Destiny because Phoebe Waller Bridges is in it, and I like her, and she's from Fleabag. Anyway. Maybe potential spoiler, maybe not. I don't know if you, you can spoil something you've you can, not watched in That's from like years. 30 years ago, 40 <laughs> years ago. Go ahead, honestly. But I know anyway, the, in the last reboot they did, well, it's not a reboot, but the last time they tried to revive the franchise, uh, it was a three-hour-long movie, which has been shit can from a number of reasons. But one of the big things was that they were trying to um, fucking hand over the mantle, if you like, who, what's the guy's name? Is in Transformers and stuff. He went a bit crazy. Oh, um, oh, it's fucking what's his Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. He's so a they cannibal. put they did a whole thing where they were trying to make him the new Indiana Jones and the whole passing of the torch and all that kind of bullshit. It takes up half the movie, and then he's not even in the next movie. So because he's you know, and anyway, Harrison Ford came out. And he's just like, stop it. The franchise dies with me. Just stop it. <laughs> Harrison Ford. Indiana Jones. We're not doing Indiana Jones Jr., even though that was a cartoon show already. Um, <laughs> it's not, it's, they're not doing it, you know. And it's the same thing with John Wick. We don't want John Wick Jr. It's not. That's gonna be weird. <laughs> I, I would watch a spinoff that's just about the dogs, right? Just the dogs, like, like Tame said before, right? We'll watch a spinoff that is like you know those animated movies for kids growing up where they would make talking dogs and they would just use really weird effects to make them talk. They will, we'll get that. We'll have like John Wick buffer dogs. It'll be John Wick's like. There's a, there is a talking dog movie coming out soon, which I think it's. Another one? I think Excellent. it's not for kids, though. I think it's an adult one. It's like a very <gasps> yeah, foul mouthed no. dogs. Oh, uh, yeah. I can't uh, remember the funny. name of it, but I definitely saw it. Is I've got to find out it, the name. I'm trying to think who's in it. Is it Chris Rock's in it? Or I think someone. Evan Hart? No, maybe. I don't know. I could, it's hard to know when they're fucking voicing. Strays by Will Ferrell, Jamie Foxx, Will Forte, Isla Jamie Fisher, Fox. Randall Park, Josh Gad. Blah, heaps, blah, blah, blah. Of them. heaps of them. Heaps of them. Loads of them. Tons of people. Strays. So, that, yeah, that's yeah. coming out in August 18. So, yeah, if you want a talking dog movie, I guess it's not <laughs> quite go. John Wick. But they're bringing them back. One. <laughs> Imagine if they did that, though. Like, they had a cameo from John Wick's dog in it. <laughs> That would be cool, actually. Yeah. I was thinking, like, you know, like Beethoven and like Beverly Hills Chihuahua, but, like that sort oh my of God. Um Cats and Dogs. You remember Cats and Dogs is like a spy movie? And you remember, was... Did you remember Milo and Otis? Because that's how far I go back. No, I don't. <laughs> you haven't seen Milo and Otis? I, I, the only thing what about, about Milo. Air Bud? Milo Air and Otis. The one that plays look, up, look up Milo and Otis and see how okay. old that film is. The only thing Milo the only thing annoys me about Milo and Otis is that quite a few animals uh died. I wasn't born at this point, nineteen eighty six. I mean I wasn't born at this point, but I was watching it as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, it's a cat and a dog. A cat and a pug. Yeah. Cat okay. and a pug, and they're just trying to get home because they, I think I think a cat falls off the waterfall or something like that. Like it falls down a creek. I don't that sounds horrifying. I don't want to watch that. Airbud though, let's watch a dog play basketball. Oh my god! I think Airbud was the yeah. Airbud was the movie that they tried to put on at school when there was like they just wanted to have a quiet day, and I do think I wagged those classes. <laughs> was, that, was that a pun? Because you wagged them? No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> god damn it! It's um, but yeah, that's anyway. John Wick, good. It's uh, more John Wick. Uh, I think that we're unfortunately. For those who aren't aware, we are in the midst of a writer's strike, and that is just going to fuck all your favourite shows <laughs> constantly. Yeah, definitely. Um, those of us who have been around for the last writer's strike will remember it fondly when shows went from having episodes to being, oh, it's over after six episodes this month. <laughs> so right. the, the new Deadpool movie started filming, and um, part of the deal with the writers is that Ryan Reynolds is not allowed to ad-lib any words or improvise anything. He has to stick directly with the script and make no changes. And everyone's like, he's going to struggle with that. Yeah, there's always going to be some kind of flexibility worked out. But, I mean, if you go back, so great examples. Heroes is a great example. Anyone who ever watched the show Heroes, I know Shelby wouldn't have watched it. Because no, I didn't. Watch I was tempted the to watch it. one? I, I was yeah. too young to watch it. I'm not a superhero, but that's the uh, save the cows. cheerleader, save the world. Was yeah, the fucking, yeah, 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 yeah. It's huge. It was basically it was um, it was sort of like Sense Eight, but it was superheroes. 
So it was like it followed like the all these different stories from all these different superheroes, and they and they all had this big bad that was coming. And the whole point of was like there was this cheerleader with this like invulnerability superpower, and it was they had to save her because whatever happens to her is going to destroy the world. And they like had a message from the future. I think one of them traveled back in time or something. Fucking awesome! It was like My Hero Academia, but like live action. There was a lot of really good actors who came out of it as well. Um, and I had a fucking awesome marketing. I had a fucking kick-ass first season. They were smashing it out of the park. Got to season two and the writer's strike happened and they just did not get through it. They're absolutely. They, like I've never, like there's absolute YouTube documentaries on the complete fall of fucking heroes. And it, was, it was a great show. I really liked it. And then they tried to revive it like twice and it, it, no one cared. Like it went from like a hundred percent hype to zero. I've never mm-hmm. seen that. Um, other thing was Scrubs. Scrubs was meant to finish that year. Yeah. And they they got seven episodes, and then I think they pulled one more out of the vault, just shoved it on the end. They got eight episodes, and they're like, well, this can't be the last. And then they ended up doing another two seasons. The Breaking Bad finale of season one changed, and then um, it was meant to be like he goes straight into being Heisenberg at the last two episodes, and then they ended up slowing that down and had it pan more into the start of the second season, apparently. Not yep. that I know much about Breaking Bad. And then I, one I remember was it the writer's strike in 2007 actually birthed the Dr. Horrible sing-along blog. Yep. That, that was a whole writer's strike project. So interesting. And we'll see, I guess, what things are affected. Well, it's already uh, the same thing where like, like Stranger Things, for example, they've just straight up said, we're not doing anything. You mm-hmm. can wait, which is kind of fucked because Netflix really needs those big hits to fucking drive their platform. Particularly since they turned on the password sharing protection. So uh, good luck to anyone who's sharing your passwords. I just want to tell everybody as well, I've been do- doing the Netflix with ads this month. Because I just wanted it to to watch one show. I just wanted to watch Queen Charlotte, and uh, the ads are really annoying. I don't recommend them. But you know, if you're only watching one thing, <laughs> if you're only watching one thing, you can watch seven ads for nappies while you're trying to watch one episode of. No, TV you can't. Show. You cannot do yeah. that. I look, <laughs> totally sh- can. It's so not, not not horrible at all. I want an asterisk next to Shelby's comment as I want it to be known that Shelby's happy to watch a movie in four parts. All right, she's. I have an attention span problem. So when she says it's happy to be broken up with seven nappies ads, it's only Shelby that's fine with I that. I was joking about that. <laughs> I like to pause my shows when I want to pause them. We tried Sorry. to watch Bumblebee the other night, and you're like, oh, I can't do it. And just went to bed. I was, I'm like, I was, I was, well, you're like 20 minutes different. from the end. <laughs> I was sleepy, and then we, I watched the 20 minutes the next night. I, uh, I just want to – I went back and watched that movie again because we're going to go see the, the new Transformers movie in a couple of weeks, and – um. Fuck me, there were some great bits and there's some real like the the original Transformers run, the Michael Bay run, is awful. Like it, like I'm a big fan of Transformers, but the dialogue in particular is awful. But then Bumblebee's like a good family kind of watch, but then there's some lines in it, you just sort of go, What the fuck? There's there's literally a line with John Cena, who's like the big army guy who's you know, he's meant to be like a likable character, fucking but he fucking John hates Cena. Transformers. He's like, There's a door in my way. <laughs> it's, it's like as he's walking up to a door, they blow it open. That's his line. I'm like, why did you even put that line in there? You don't even need that line in there. It's like, mm. what the fuck? It's uh, it's so. It was good though. I, I like Haley Steinfeld a lot, so I was excited. Yeah, she's good. She's going places. That's for sure. But it's like, it, so the the new for those who don't follow the Transformers universe, don't blame you because it's fucking well out there. You might as well use the watch the animated shows. To be honest. Um. They reboot it in Bumblebee. It's a reboot. Michael Bay verse is gone. It's rebooted in Bumblebee. And the next movie that's coming along is in the Bumblebee. In the Bumblebee verse. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, this uh, like there's some shit. But the only thing I'd say is in Bumblebee, they show like Cybertron, like their home planet and their war with the Decepticons. That shit's awesome. They could just do a full fucking three hours of that and I'd be I think them rock having- hard. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Them showing that, though, it actually added, like, decent emphasis to, like, Because that's backstory. what it's like. But I just mean that's something that was missing from the Michael Bay verse. From the first Transformers movie, you didn't no, get No, because, okay, well, Michael Bay, Michael Bay is oh, like, boy. let's show that from the human's point of view. Because it's hard to humans show giant robots without you having this dissociation of going, well, this is fake. You know, so they, like, if we show it, so he would film everything in light, in real, right? And then he'll always make it. Now that, I, well, now that I break it down, every time you watch the movie, you go, well, the, this is fucking shit. But like, there'll be like the camera will pan past a car or a lamppost or a fence. 
something real and then they'll cg the robots behind that so it all looks real like you could feel like you're in there because everything is real except for the robots and that's how he shoots it all so it's all from a human perspective looking up at these big robots fighting in the thing that's not the way it's meant to work. You watch the cartoons and shit. The robots are the main characters. They have personalities. They talk to each other. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't really care about the humans. I, I want to see the robots fighting and turning exactly. into Exactly. That's like, why you, cool cars. If, you, if you want giant robots kicking their asses, then you're better off watching Pacific Rim. Like, it's just so much better. I love Pacific Rim. The fucking yeah, scene, it's a scene in movie. Pacific Rim when he's got the fucking, the, the, the big ship, the big oil liner, and he's using it as a fucking bat, and he's just walking down That's the road. That's so sick. So uh, cool. I love that. Such a good scene. Um, yeah, Pacific Rim, they did. I didn't watch the cartoon. I think you watched the animated series, didn't you, Shelby? I started watching it. It was not great, so I <laughs> didn't keep watching it. It yeah. just, like I said, I have an attention span problem. If you don't grab me within five minutes, I'm out. I'm sorry. My brain it, just checks out. The whole grand plan was to be Pacific Rim, King Kong, Godzilla, we're all going to be in the Monsters universe, and we're mm. going to sort of tie into each other. And we got Kong versus godzilla which i watched it it's a weird movie uh it's just weird in so many ways like it feels like they took two movies and just mashed them together like they have just real tonal difference all sometimes the way through not it. everything needs to be in a multiverse just put them separate well there's a new kong kong movie coming king kong i've never watched a king kong movie and enjoyed it i've watched plenty of godzilla movies. i thought you were gonna say that, i thought you were about to say i've never watched king kong before i've never heard of it <laughs> I've watched one King Kong to, to the full. I've watched one fully. I didn't like Which it Which one? Much, the but... Peter Jackson one? Yes. Yeah. Um, nah. But I always liked Godzilla, except when I was a kid, right? My dad watched you... Godzilla a lot because it was one of his favorite franchises. And I was actually terrified of Godzilla. Specifically, I was also terrified of Mothra. But anyway, Godzilla in like the early 2000s. Ones, okay, hang on. Because like... there's three Godzillas. So which Godzilla did you watch? There was I the... watched all Godzillas, except for the latest one. The latest one's good. Like it's I really good. That yet. But I, I just mean the ones from like the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I would be sitting on the couch watching that with my dad, and then I would start to drift off to sleep, and then I would have like a nightmare slash daymare about Godzilla coming up over the houses behind behind my house and like destroying my house. So I was scared of Godzilla, even though I really like Godzilla, and I was also terrified of Mothra to a point where if I saw a moth in my house, my parents would like chase me around with the moth and like ushering it near me, going, "Look, it's a Mothra! Mothra is gonna get you!" And I'd be screaming bloody murder, being chased by a moth. Oh my god, that's terrifying. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> anyway, I was traumatized. I'm trying to but remember. But I still like Godzilla. There was, wasn't it. Was it the nineties? What was the yeah, God, 1998? Was okay, so they had they had one. Shin Godzilla, which is the 30s, 40s, 50s the ones they maintain with like the almost like the puppetry kind yeah. of thing. Then they did Godzilla, which was the big reboot for the Western audiences, and that, that's it. And they it even was had a Godzilla toy. It was cool. They had many. Everything. It had everything. It had a fucking... I remember it had a kick-ass soundtrack and fucking everything. They went full out with it. But I remember that the CGI was so hard to achieve that they made the entire movie. It's raining. And it was weird because it was like you never yeah. really got to see Godzilla until like towards the end. But then they had that really weird thing. So if you... It, I don't recommend this movie. Watch the newest Godzilla if you're interested in Godzilla. Okay. But this one is like... goes for an hour and a half, nearly two hours with Godzilla. And then... There's another hour where they find Godzilla's eggs and there's baby Godzilla's running around in the stadium. And it's like, what? We, what? Okay. <laughs> why are we here? What, why are we here? We don't need this extra hour of weirdness to it. <laughs> it's like, that is pretty weird. And yeah, so the movie just came. Just like, once they killed Godzilla, they should have just went roll credits and would have been fine. But they it had this weird thing where they go to a, I think it's like a baseball stadium and it's full of eggs. Oh, no, this is a basketball stadium. Is it basketball? The basketball yeah, 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 she's yeah. in the basketball stadium. It's just like, that's such a weird thing to it. So looking at it, no, actually, it would go, the movie goes for two hours and ten minutes, so it probably should have wrapped it an hour and ten. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's, it's very weird. But I do, like, I do like the new Godzilla, and um, there's three Godzilla movies. There's Godzilla, Godzilla King of the Monsters, and Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, and it is the Kong from Peter Jackson's Kong, by the way. So he continues on, and then they've got another one coming later this year. But it's uh, they are good. The only thing is they introduce all these side characters, and then they're all in the Godzilla vs. Kong. Like They've got a cast of like 30 side characters who are completely mm, re irrelevant. And I don't know if we, if we – I think we talked about it on the podcast, but this whole plot about they go to the center of the earth to power up Kong's hammer he's going to bash Godzilla with. And it's like, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so they, like the, apparently the world's hollow and you can go into the center and that's where Kong gets his power. I just I want to say, <laughs> I just think that every movie or franchise or thing these days doesn't need to be a multiverse. You don't need to link things together. You don't need to add different dimensions. Just stop doing it. Godzilla is fine without King Kong. King Kong is fine though. without Godzilla. No, I don't care if it makes money. It's stupid. No, but they need money. <laughs> well, to make they, movies. <laughs> well, maybe they should stop making movies. At the same time, you can. Money, then... At the same time, you can just look at the the was it the dark cinematic universe or whatever it was where they like they're going to do all the monsters and they announced all the actors playing all the monsters and they started with John Cruise as the mummy and it was just awful and then they oh, just yeah. canned the whole thing and it was meant to have like Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man and stuff like that. Yeah, they did this why whole would you photo cast Johnny shoot Depp and then make him invisible? And it wasn't Russell Crowe like Jackal versus Hyde or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it was. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I remember seeing that. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to go see another mummy movie. You already perfected the mummy. We don't need that anymore. <laughs> yeah. The mummy has been perfected. All right. Brendan Fraser nailed it the first time. We don't need to go back to that. Well, we are yeah. well fed already. But yeah. It's been a, it's been a, an interesting week. Um, I've been obviously still raising money for charity, although we've, we've, we've hit our goals, which is nice. It's that um, it was a little bit, bit concerned but i think a bit of pep talking a bit of winding people up in the last couple of days has got got us over the line so we raised tim oc raised five thousand dollars for uh game on cancer which is huge mm. game on cancer themselves have said it's the largest campaign they've ever done um they're aiming for 100k and i think they're about 5k off at the moment which is pretty fucking awesome honestly easy um, oh yeah yeah it's a it's it's always a bit like we do really dumb shit for raising money for charity, but then every now and then, like, the chewy. You, every now and then you talk to people and they're like, "Yo, this is how cancer has affected me." It's like, "Holy shit, this is uh, this is a big downer." I, oh yeah, it's like it's like from the really serious, like horrible yeah. conversation to the I did a chewy. Yeah, please custard. hold your please hold your super sad story. I just need a drink custard from a shoe. <laughs> I mean, both both are effective methods, I guess. You know, it, you do need to have like a human side of things to sometimes get people to, to open their hearts and wallets. So there's that. I mean, it's a it's a it's a uh, internet busking is the easiest, easiest way to put it. So, that's literally what we are. Yeah, it's, it's pouring just, ourselves yeah. out for coins. Dance monkey, dance dance monkey. You, it's drink, definitely a case of a dancing monkey. I think. Drink the custard people, from the shoe, monkey. <laughs> <laughs> people make you do a lot of strange things like and oh, i'll do it for money <laughs> <The charity. laughs> yes no it's uh it's been good it's i think a few people um because obviously i've been heading up the the team oc side of things and a few people were a bit iffy on how to do it and stuff like that um and i think i think i probably went a little bit too hard i've promised myself to many many shenanigans and many games 250 and... hours worth of games to come or something maybe to still go right and mm. not only that i think i've nearly nailed my biggest month of streaming like even like rp days i didn't even get this many hours into a month so no, it's pretty been, wild it's been a big big uh, month um I still have to do a 24 hour stream and a cooking stream. All I know is I have to make a cinnamon rolls. So Well, I, I, I I've, I've been ticking things off and I've left a lot of the bigger games to now, but I've started Elden Ring, which is it's an adventure. Um mm -hmm. uh, like I could see myself enjoying it, but I can also see where the pain is. But also a lot of people like to watch it and I think a lot of people get frustrated with my way of playing it. You definitely had some people who coming into the chat was like first time chatter. They never they just go around all the new Elden Ring streams and they're like, yeah, I'm keen to see how this guy goes and plays it and like gets into it. And then they're just like, yeah, yeah. oh, it's he doesn't know it's anything. Like, how, how long have you been playing? I'll be like one hour. Like, hmm, do you want me to jump in? I've been playing for three thousand. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll proceeds figure to make it out. multiple mistakes and they're like you do realize you've got a debuff right like hey, what's happening you know this i mean i was complaining for my... ages i was running around like why don't you make a build or blah 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 i'm like i don't even fucking know how to level up and the first thing they said is just turn around and go the other way because i'm going the wrong way first they're while. like this is why you suck <laughs> is pretty much what they're doing. anyway i looked up how long to beat elden ring and it's like if you're really good 50 hours if you're shit at least 100 and that's like, typical all right. Soulsborne game isn't it like very Damn. long I don't know. I've never made it to the end of a Soulsborne game. Tame, have you played a Soulsborne game? You, you've been no. One? Would you ever? I don't know. Maybe. For charity? <laughs> For charity, I would. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's it, uh, like, I, I really liked Bloodborne, which was the PlayStation 4 game. 
That's the vampire one. It was really good, and then it was a. It was at, at at one point the game sort of opens up, and then you're free to go left, right, back, forth, wherever you want to go. And as soon as it gave me choice, I was out. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't figure out where the fuck I was meant to be going. I just kept getting stuck in like. I walk into a room, like everything just destroys me. I'm like, why did that happen? Like, well, you're not meant to be there yet. I'm like, where the fuck am I meant to be? <laughs> Where's the sign? Where's the sign up that says we're not supposed to be there? No, I, I and get then, that. Then we tried to play, because this is back, we, so we had that whole, I have too many games I haven't played. Put all the games I haven't played on a wheel. We span the wheel, and then I got Dark Souls 2. I'm like, all right, and we go. We're also trying to get as many trophies as you can. We tried to get 1,000 trophies for the PlayStation trophies in a year. Work. No, we failed at about 780. Still pretty mm. solid effort. Um, but yeah, no, with Dark Souls 2, I lasted like an hour. And I just remember that I was stuck in a room with like 30 skeletons. And then I'm just like, this is not fun. This is pain. This is actual pain. <laughs> this is cock and balls torture, I believe. We, we dubbed it. Excuse um, me. The, 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 the level layout and everything else is very different for Elden Ring. And I can get, get the hang of it. And it does have an ability to like, level yourself up so worst comes to worst we're still a bit of grinding we're all good you know well some people are saying it's one of the easiest souls games even though it's the longest correct so yes. not too i'm not too not too sad about that um i will get through it and play it and uh, like it's, it is a nice game like it looks pretty i like the combat i like all the everything about it and i like i like watching people play it i just hate i hate playing it failing and knowing that there's like people that'll be like i've done this whole game you know Without being touched, <laughs> it's like well, I've already died twenty times. So show we gave up counting immediately. It's like nah, we don't was, need the death was, counter. <laughs> <laughs> I just I also know um, that if I ever tried a Souls game, I would probably hate it immediately because of my short ass attention span, which I've already mentioned a few times this podcast. It's really the day for it, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but the Souls game is definitely not something that I can do. So I admire your bravery at least in putting it as a give it a crack. Zone. Why not? Give Play it a go. Worse. Futurama, you know. <laughs> yeah, Futurama. <laughs> but it's 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 uh yeah, I don't know. We'll see how we go. We'll play it. I'll play it till credits roll at the very least. I don't know if we'll be farming anything in particular, but I've been watching other people have been playing like randomized versions and a lot of the thing is the big boss at the end is extremely hard. Um, almost meme worthy how how difficult unless you sort of, you know, Millennia, isn't it? Yeah, Millennia. Yes, yeah. I think so. And then you got that that Twitch streamer called Let Me Solo Her, and they fight her naked all the time. Yeah, so Let Me Solo yeah. recently finished the game where he chained modded the game so every single mob in the in the entire game is Melina. Everyone fought him naked. All the fucking goats, horses, all of them. They're all Melina, and he just ran through and finished the game. And it was really laggy. So it's yeah. um. Yeah, so anyway, I'm not doing that. I will play it. Um, there's no easy Ill mode. advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's cool. It's fine. I, like, I don't mind playing a little bit extra and stuff like that. There are some more games and stuff that are coming up that I would like to play, which means that I need to get my ass in the gear and play these games and finish them. So we'll get there. But I mean, Elden Ring, it's a game of the year for a reason. Like, it's, it's a big game. And I just, came out of, I just came out of Zelda, which is this game's of the year. Um, no one's going to convince me otherwise. Um, that game is gonna take home all the fucking trophies and then uh yeah i, I suppose it's interesting um there's so many people that are like need to get zelda done because diablo comes out like they've all got their big games are kind of back to back to back the way they go for the rest of the year like there's not a lot else and like sony did their big presentation there wasn't a lot in there to be honest and there's not a lot that's like coming immediately and there's not a lot that's exclusive to playstation they they they, they did show spider-man and spider-man does look spectacular um, yeah. But I mean, Insomniac's doing a lot of heavy lifting for PlayStation right now. <laughs> like, oh, definitely. <laughs> they, they've carried this entire generation. It's kind of wild. Um, I'll definitely buy it. But you know, lots of cool PSVR two titles, but not enough to warrant the nine hundred dollar price tag and the weird tablet thing, whatever it is. The oh, the the tablet thing that Sony announced. The yeah, basically the the Switch. Yeah, it's funny though because I, like I made a tweet and like I don't understand how this is a good idea and how it's going to do well unless it's super cheap. Because if it was cheap, then you know it's you buy this tablet that you can give anyone in the in the household, and they can play the PlayStation on their tablet, and you can have a free TV. You know, it's free up to watch things mm. now, but it's not going to be cheap. Like it needs no, to be it's cheap. It's going to be at least like four hundred, five hundred bucks. It'll be four hundred, five hundred bucks. Yeah, and yeah. then it's it's just going to be nope. We're good. No, it's, what, I don't need it. Like I have a Backbone, which cost me a hundred bucks. Backbone's still a good buy, and they they've announced like a. a I got an Android Sony one edition. coming. 
We've got an Android yeah. one coming. Um, if they only had an iOS one, which you can get Backbone for Xbox as well. It's not a PlayStation. Backbone, Backbone for those who don't know, is like a fancy controller attachment for your phone that then you yeah. can play your PlayStation Five games on your phone. Very good. Very neat. Very neat. Just a really nice controller that slaps around your phone, and then you can just remote play to your PlayStation. And the it works still fine. Nice. Yeah, it's quality. Fun. I've been using it so that, like, uh, I forget what game we're playing. We're playing something, and then I was like, where, after stream, because I don't want to sit at my desk anymore, because, you know, work there, then you stream there. And it's you like, want to I'm still game, though, because you're a nerd. You just but I want a that. game, though. I want to do my, keep continue grinding, so then I whip out the backbone, and I'll just go lay on the couch and play on the couch. It fucking works. I was great. playing Ape Escape on it, the PlayStation 1 Ape Escape. That was good. Yeah, I, re- I did the, um, I had to do a review for Rooftop Renegade, Rooftop Renegade, the Aussie game. Um, and I'm like, ah, oh, man, I'm just going to play this on the backbone. It was fucking perfect. Like that, if I had a choice, I'd probably buy that game on the Switch because it was, it was just a fucking, it was very addictive. Um, very good, just like an endless runner almost. But um, yeah, it's just playing it on the backbone. It's great. Which I thought, if anything, like if there's any kind of delay or anything like that, that sort of game where if you'll miss it by a second and you fuck it up, that'll really tell you and no issues. So yeah, it's like the technology's there, but the pro- the point is the technology's already there. Why are you spending so much money on relaunching a product? You know? Yeah, makes no sense. We'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'm excited to see some reviews that come out about it and see what people say. Yeah, I mean, it'll be like PSVR too. There's only some people get it, and it'll be fucking expensive. Anyway, it is what yeah. it is. But it's um yeah. My point is that there's only there's only so many big games, and Sony's really only got Spider Man going to be the big game for them. That's true. They're not really doing anything more with her, her Horizon for a little bit. Well, they're going to make so the other big Horizon's ones. going into the TV movie. Area. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, it's been a it's been a busy week. Otherwise, um, update on my my dentist saga. They fixed a lot of teeth and only fucked one tooth. So I have the most teeth I've had for a while. <laughs> that sounds well, so weird meant saying to that. Fix your teeth. That's it. Literally, it was like he, like I broke the tooth before the charity stream last weekend, and I'm like, went in and they're like, guess what? I broke my tooth. And he's like, that's fine. We've got your replacement. He gave it to him in a little bag. No, he literally didn't run it. So oh. anyway, you went all that effort to clean it, put it in a little Ziploc bag, so you and then he goes. Teeth back and so he fixed all, he fixed did all the work and stuff that I meant to do this week. Fixed the one down the bottom and everything. And then he's like, oh, I'll give you a bit of quick clean. And then as he's cleaning, one of the two teeth at the front ch- chipped. He's like, oh, that's interesting. Anyway, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> like, yeah. fuck! I was so close to getting out of there. Oh, I 100% <laughs> feel absolutely scammed by the dentist. And, like, he tried to make, like, small talk. And I, I kid you not, I forget he said something like, what are your plans for the weekend or something like that. My brain went, don't talk to this fucking scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, uh, yeah, I have a better relationship with my dentist. I think he's very nice to me. Um, he's really nice. Good. He's just a fucking asshole. Well, most, <laughs> most dentists are purely because of the money that they suck out of you, and you know, um, I, it, it is a huge scam in Australia that Medicare doesn't really cover uh, much in the way of dental, and that's because uh, the dentist basically rallied against it and had it removed from being public. There's a very small amount of public health care available for dentists. So it's, I got, it's, I got, it's crap. I got four root canals, um, yeah. which I'm, I'm doing pretty good for four root canals, going to be honest. Fucking two and a half grand. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> uh, like, I had... That's a computer. <laughs> that's, I, that'll my, fix my, my trip, computer problems. I was also at the dentist this week, and my trip there used the entirety of my budget that I had left on my health insurance. I've got the top, I've got the most expensive health insurance that you can get. It's something I still have $148 a week. No, a fortnight. I pay for it. Anyway, they used all of it um, immediately. In, in one go, to a point where I owe them money. So I still have to go on Wednesday and pay them more money uh, out of my pay. So They're going to come break just, your yeah. legs. They're going to come for your kneecaps. They know where I live and I live across the, the street from the, you know, so they'll, they'll anyway, be able to find me easily and come and get me. Enough dentist but... talk, but I'm fucking sick of them. This is right. <laughs> oh, so you mentioned it. I just want to say it is a huge scam. And, you know, Medicare should cover dentistry better because dentists not only is Medicare like, should do a lot of things anyway. I, this... well, yeah, the government should do a lot of fucking things that they don't. Dental care is important because a lot of people's heart attacks and things like that are linked to having dental infections. Mm-hmm. That's it's, it's like a huge cause of a lot of a lot Look, of deaths. I'm gonna give you an option here to opt out, or I can tell you some awful things about dentistry. But it's up to you. Would you want to opt in or opt out of this? I want to opt out because you and I have been having this conversation for several weeks now. 
good. Excellent. Good opt out because it was a terrible story. <laughs> yeah, I have I have worse. I just wanted to also say I used to go in the public system to a public dental hospital uh, quite She's a bit opting and I had root there. And I just want to say I had, in. I had a, no, this is a funny story. It's funny, not funny at the, mo- at the time, but <laughs> because I went to the public dental places, I, I was also the subject of all of the students. And, you know, because I was also a really tolerant patient and I would be sitting in the chair, you know, and, and let, like letting them put their hands in my mouth for like four hours. I shit you not, my longest appointment was four hours in the chair one, straight up. Anyway, because for some reason I just zone out and just think about other things. But... A, this dental student was the only one in the room with me and she goes to numb me with the numbing needle and then stabs me in the cheek on the outside of my face. But she, instead of acknowledging it and apologizing, which would have been fine, she just moves on and acts like it never happened. That is not a funny story. It's <laughs> terrible. It's a, it's a terrible story. Anyway, she was a dental student and I just decided I'm not going to fight this battle today. I'm not going to say anything. But also, That's when, when where my put... dentist came from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The one who trained me a few years ago is probably working on you now. So anyway, changing the subject uh, because the I've subject. been so miserable with um, fucked teeth because my dentist is uh, the same dentist that stabbed you on the outside of your mouth. Yeah. Uh, I've been I've been hibernating between streams. I've basically been hibernating watching trash TV, yes. and the show I want to bring up because I went. I'm like, what is the trashiest background TV show that I could watch? And I'm I using. I've been, I've been watching uh, using Paramount Plus because I, I've got a couple of weeks left on that. So I thought, oh, I'll watch whatever's on there. Anyway, I decided to watch the uh, Catfish. I'm no, watching Pablo Catfish. Is way trashier. I don't want. I want to watch TV that I actually want to watch. I don't want to okay. watch that. You want to watch catfish? I see. I want to watch catfish. I want to watch people going. I thought you were hot, and then it's like, yeah, baby. I don't know why you didn't realize I wasn't so hot. <laughs> it's like, the amount of time that it's like, oh my god! Like the this is a fucking episode that I watched the other day when it was sitting on the fucking couch after the dentist it was like, he's like, oh, I met this guy on Instagram, and then instantly the host is like. Looking at the Instagrams, like these are all different people. He's like, no, nah, they're not. They're all the same. It's just, <laughs> just sometimes he's really ripped and sometimes he's not. He's like, yeah, but he's missing tattoos. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh, so and and the thing what they did in this episode was they they tracked them because they do like reverse look image look up on Google to find where the images came from. And one was a basketball player, one was a model, one was a fucking football player. Anyway, he got them all on Zoom and then got the guy that he thought he was talking to him all in the one room. He's like, well, here's all the Instagram pictures for you. <laughs> and the dude's like, yeah, this changes a lot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Poor bloke. It's so good. Um, anyway, I want to talk about a particular episode because I was like, this is an interesting twist. But it was like, so the, the season I'm watching is like people dob them in. So it's like, hey, my mate's getting catfished. Can you help? And then they kind of just blindsight the mate and go, we're coming to find your fake girlfriend or whatever. And there was this one where they're like, this girl's um, getting catfished. But it's by this person who contacted them out of the blue and said, I'm your half sister. And they're like, what the fuck? You know, are they trying to like chase for clout or chase for money or whatever? So then they went to like the other known sisters and they like asked them, they go, Hey, you know, do you have another sister? Whatever. And they're like, no, but we had got contacted by the same person and we told her the fuck off. We don't have any other sisters. And then they asked the dad because the person, the main person in the show wasn't, was estranged. So they couldn't ask the dad. The other sisters were with the father still. And the father's like, no, don't have any other kids. Not true. Um, so anyway, they, 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 you know, call them out on it and say, Hey, you know, we want to meet up. And they're like, oh, I don't, I don't know if we should do that. It's probably a bad idea, thinking it's, you know, it's going to be some blood, whatever. It's usually, it's usually someone who's like, I've had a really hard time, so I was bored, and then I created ninety accounts and started harassing people, stuff like that. Anyway, they go through with the meet. They meet up. It seems perfectly normal. And she's like, well, the reason I didn't want to meet is because, um, according to her mother, who would have dated the other girl's father, that the main girl is the one who's not actually the sister like she was she's the one that's been lied to Plot the whole twist. time Plot twist i'm like oh wow what a twist this is a fucking great show you know whatever it's a, and anyway they go they all turn up and they're like we're gonna have a fucking we're gonna sort this out it's gonna be a dna test we're gonna prove that you're a fake you know blah 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 anyway they did the dna test turns out they're sisters it was oh not it, it wasn't a catfish at all she was legit she was a sister it was the dad that was lying the whole time She's like she was the actual sister. Jesus, I'm like, what the fuck? Dirty laundry. <laughs> what that, the fuck? I, I've, been, 
I've been considering doing one of those genealogy DNA tests, but I just know from some distance fucked up stories in my family, it's going to uncover some shit, and I'm not ready for those conversations, I think. Uh, but I, I'm very curious to see if anything strange like that in my family. Yeah, well, it was it was it was interesting because, like I said, it's a pretty standard formula normally. I think you're mm. someone. Turns out you're not that someone. Get the fuck out of my life, you sad piece of shit. It's usually the way yeah. it goes. But this was just like at the end. There's like, no, you're actually sisters. Now they hang out and stuff, and they're best friends and whatever. Like, what the fuck? That's what wild. a twist. Have you guys ever had somebody try and like catfish you on the internet? No, I haven't. But my cousin, she just got catfished not that long <gasps> ago. Tell us. Dish. But Dish. she ended up giving money to this person too. Oh no! How much money yeah. are you talking? I'm not sure. It was a lot, but she, her daughter, was the one who ended up finding like the photos that were sent and showed my cousin like, this is the person who you say he is, but he's actually got a family and he lives here. Yep. And then my cousin actually thought about it because he was like saying, oh, I need to get out of wherever he was and like just put money in my account. And so that's what he was doing. So that's what she was doing. But Jesus. yeah. Oh. Crazy. They just send money to people. Just don't do it. Nah. Yeah. Well, there was one oh, yeah, episode. They, they met, yeah. like, they started talking through Instagram too. Instagram. Yeah, that's so always was like, That was the first red flag right there. Yeah. It's yeah. always Instagram. It's, 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 it's wild. Cause the motions are, we met on Instagram or we met on Facebook and then we talked. It's like, why have, have you FaceTimed each other? No. Why? Why have you, why not? And then every now and then it's like, oh, I asked them, but they said their phone was broken that week or whatever. And then there's yeah. the, well, I, the, you know, they lived in LA and I lived in New York, but I flew to LA. But when I got there, they were busy. But red flags, man, they're red flags. They're everywhere. <laughs> I had that sort of thing. Well, I had a friend uh, who flew from Ireland to go to the US to visit his, his online girlfriend. And uh, though she was a real person, she was legit. She wouldn't meet up with him, didn't meet up with him at the airport, wouldn't like hang out with him or anything. Met awkwardly at her college campus and said hi. And then she like refused to spend time with him. And I was like, you don't. And as somebody who's, who's like flown internationally to meet somebody online before, like don't fucking do it. It's never worth it. I've never had it hurt anybody who has like said that they've done that and it's panned out well without already knowing that person beforehand, like properly. Yes, we've already had your very sad episode about your very trip to New Zealand. I've had some <laughs> wild, some I'm just saying, though, just, like, be fucking smarter than I was, but I just just don't do it. Not worth it. It's been entertaining TV, but, yeah, I definitely see a lot of that. We I, when, when Back when, like, uh, Zombies Love Bacon was started, we had, like, a community. We had 100-something people in there, and a lot of us were called GD players and stuff like that, and... There was always a bit of beef, uh, you know. People get, you know, disagree with each other and whatever. And it was all part of growing a community, you know. And I remembered there was a heap of people that like this. This girl is a catfish. Like she's catfishing guys. You know, she's you know posting freaking pictures or whatever. And uh, you know, she's trying to lure people in. And all that. Like it's all this bullshit. I'm like, I'm like, mate, we're just playing games. So fucking stop trying to hit on people, and you're not getting catfished. It's fine. It doesn't matter what they look like. Um, anyway, it wasn't the case. Um, so she wasn't a catfish. She legitimately was a very attractive woman. And uh, <laughs> people just couldn't believe that she was playing Call of Duty. <laughs> like, Hot it's a catfish. playing Call of Duty? That can't be real, <laughs> can't mate. Can't be real, can't mate. Be. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so was, I, uh, I'll never get over that because I was just like, I'm like, whatever, man. It doesn't matter. We're just fucking playing games. The, the guys were just losing their shit. They're just losing their shit. And so... It's possible, man. It happens. It happens. But um, actually brings us, it's a great segue into the, and I don't know the full story because it's just so, there's so much getting un, to be unpacked. But the, the big, the, the second thing that the internet is mad about this week uh, is the FaZe Clan back from the OG days of Call of Duty. Uh, you know, we, we, zombies love bacon. Many, many of us would have looked up to FaZe back then, the OG. Um, but they recently, Amongst all the other shit that's been going on, you just have to look at their share price to see how bad it's been going on at FaZe. Uh, signed on Grace Van Deen, who is an actress from Stranger Things, to be, you know, join their content team, streaming, whatever. I think she's Valorant mainly. Yeah. Something like that. Streams, she's a streamer and everything else. Which would be fine normally, I feel. But FaZe has got a microscope over them at the moment. Because every move they're making costs lots of money and has no return. 
So they're trying to pump up their public image. Because they have stakeholders, right? They have, you can buy shares and stuff in them. Yeah, they went public, and now that yeah. it's now one hundredth of what it's worth when it went public. Like mm. they're they're risking going delisted. That's how low their their prices are. So it's uh, yeah, it's bad. Anyway, there's a whole feud with the OG, the OG um, Phase Clan who aren't necessarily part of Phase Clan anymore being calling them out on their bullshit and their shitty practices and everything else. But I think the problem that I had with this was they tweeted out, we need more females in FaZe Clan, which they do. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking sausage fest. It's clear, you know, and comments like the no hot girls play Call of Duty is exactly why they need to put some <laughs> fucking women in the FaZe Clan. But what was revealed was that they were tweeting that out, but they'd already lined up this chick to join. They weren't actually uh... looking for more females. They already picked... The actress, the hot girl from Stranger Things to be signed on, which would be fine if it was like a content team, like if it was like, you know, making YouTube videos and stuff like that. But from a gaming prowess, and they're meant to be professional gamers in esports, yeah? I feel like there's a lot of talented females that got overlooked because they're not in the episode of Stranger Things, you know? Like, it's probably some pretty top... Probably. But also, I think like most women with half a brain would say no to FaZe Clan. Yeah, but money... Yeah, I guess. <laughs> like, like, I do like money. I guarantee you that they're paying millions. Yes. Where definitely. they could pay, they could definitely. change the life of five girls at fifty k a pop just by bringing them on, just because they're not in the episode of Stranger Things. Yeah, this is true. Like, it's again, it's it's the it's the the, the, the they want to be perceived as being cool and have all these cool people in their team, but the you're better off having people that are good at the game. Like, I'm not saying that she's not good at it, but there are some fucking guns out there that aren't signed to nothing that mm. could have been signed and changed life and whatever, and they work hard. You know, just because they're not an actress doesn't mean they should miss out on the opportunity where it was a rigged game from the start. They said they needed more chicks, but they were just pumping up ready for their next announcement. Yeah. Uh, and the reason, why, the reason why it all got deflated and then firebombed was that one of the OG from FaZe Clan replied to that tweet when they made it, said, Spoiler alert, it's this chick from Stranger Things. It's already decided. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah. so, so it's just, it's, it is a beautiful fucking disaster at FaZe Clan at the moment. And I think um, Ludwig just put out a video today even, just, just breaking down the bullshit that's going on. And it's like the third part in a three-part video series on how fucked FaZe Clan is at the moment. But yeah, I'm not, not joking when I say that, like, we used to look up to FaZe as like, wow, look at these... Bunch of guys got really good at the game, got organized, you know, signed deals, fucking got sponsored, got making money. Where you go. That's, I mean, that's, that would be the dream. But Faye's just uh, living in a different dream, I think. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's kind of wild. If you want to know more, look it up. But uh, like the, the, I just wanted to put my two cents in there. I think um, some people, particularly when you talk to like professional gaming sort of stuff, um, yes, it's one thing to, bring someone on because they're popular, but it's another thing to say, hey, you know, maybe we can give the opportunity to some other people that have big communities and big stuff as well. So, but yeah, uh, it's interesting. And it's that time, that great time every week where we discover how fucking amazing Australian towns are. No shit here. No shit at all. Uh, this is your weekly news wrap-up courtesy of Shit Towns of Australia. So number 10, as always, is Port Port Piri. South Australia still shits because of all the lead in the water and air. Uh, Number nine is Edmonton, Queensland. Drongo was arrested after running past the police station with a stolen cash register. (laughs) (laughs) That's some cartoon shit. That's some... some... That is some cartoon Uh, shit. You'd see that on Family Guy or something. I don't know. It's just not right. (laughs) There's yep. not even much more to say about that one, so nope, moving on. Yep. Uh, Bustleton, Western Australia, Gronk armed with gun, holds up a gun shop to steal guns. Oh, my Gronk. God. Oh, God. Infinite gun hack. Infinite gun hack. He's figured <laughs> it out, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Get some guns, you figured can rob the, the gun meta. store for guns, and then when you have guns, you can rob the gun store for guns. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how it works. Um Moving on, we have Wynyard, Tasmania. A granddad was knocked out by a coward punch at a wedding, followed by a mad brawl involving the groom, mother of bride, and an old lady whacking people with a walking stick. Fantastic. That's another fucking comedy show right there. Oh, yeah, that's 
That's on some sort of show. Fucking Nana with the stick, you're tapping them. Get, get, stop it! Stop it! <laughs> His granny's getting wedding, wild though. these days. It feels bad for the groom and the, the bride. They'll probably in it. They'll probably in the fucking scrum. No way to go. Yeah. <laughs> some families just shouldn't be brought together, I guess. Uh, number six is Catherine Northern Territory. Ten and eleven year old kids were arrested after allegedly holding up a servo with scissors and a toy gun. Oh my god. A ten? Yeah, ten and eleven. A ten year old. They should have just tried to rob the gun store with a gun. That's how you get real guns. Listen, you know they've been watching too many movies, man. At ten at ten years old, they're not even allowed to stream on Twitch. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure at 10 years old, I was still pretending to be a horse on the saddle club for <laughs> yeah, <I mean. laughs> Fucking hell. Still playing with toys. This guy's running out trying yeah. to rob servos. Yeah, I was playing Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hobart, Tasmania is number five. Drunk driver was charged after crashing into an ambulance attending an accident and a serial public wanker jailed over a fresh batch of offences and a high school student inches his hand while smashing window with a dildo. <laughs> Why is it always Tasmania that has the wild week? That's, that's a they're, lot. they're wild down there, man. Jesus Christ. I, 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 that, just, that just kept going. That just kept going. I it thought just... Serial Wanker is the best title I've ever and heard. And somehow this is not number one on the list. God damn. Go Tasmania. That was only number five. Uh, number four, though, is, is Cairns, Queensland. Lifeguard accused of filming kids in public pool changing room. An intruder falls into a cactus. And Great Barrier Reef tests positive for chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Damn, Reef, you've been getting around. <laughs> so it was a chlamydia like bacteria was discovered in the Great Barrier Reef. And then everyone was asking, is it safe for swimmers? <clears throat> um, it's the first time that pathogens responsible for chlamydia infections in mammals have been detected in corals. So, uh, question I've been to yeah. the Great Barrier Reef. So does Do that you mean... have chlamydia? Yeah. Chlamydia. Did you fuck a coral? I think that's that's the key thing there. If you just swam, I think you're okay. But we should get you tested, Definitely. maybe. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, it's it's sort of a mystery. They're sort of figuring out what's happened there now. Um, All of Queensland has committee. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird headline. Um, number three though is Sydney, New South Wales. Red light runner flees after bowling over three children. A despo charged after that. killing and trying to cook a bin chicken. That's the bin chicken yeah, from that last same time. Guy. Yeah, that's the yeah. same guy. Same but guy. Except he's, he's getting charged now. They yep. went to his house. Yep. They yep. actually went to his house and he had one. Like, had I saw the article and I showed Shelby. I'm like, surely it's not the same. Shelby's like, no, it's, it's the, the same, same guy. guy. It's the same guy. Same guy. And it's just, I wonder if this is the first guy who has appeared in shit towns of Australia multiple times as an individual. Also, I'd like to point out that they interviewed the guy, like the news interviewed him. They asked him, they asked him, they asked him what it tastes like. And he's like, I haven't eaten it yet. <laughs> So that was yeah, his likely answer. He has to say that, otherwise, he gets more trouble. <laughs> that, that makes but, it sound like he's going eat, to eat it. <laughs> they eat rubbish, though. So, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, they're, they're probably full that, of though. microplastics, obviously. But I mean, so is apparently. I mean, if you're eating bin eat. chickens, I'm sure you've eaten some shit anyway. So it's like, maybe, maybe literally. Maybe he knows something we don't. Maybe he thought bin chicken was pretty literal. I think he just, just saw. He saw. He just said he saw roast chook on long legs. That's he what saw, he saw. That's a that's a that's a nice decent sized bird. It's, it's weird. <laughs> it's it's a strange story. We'll definitely probably see more info about that coming out. Apparently, um, next is Toowoomba, Queensland. By the way, Townsville has escaped the list this week, which wow. is strange for Townsville. Good on you, Townsville. You had a clean week, I think. Uh, but we got Toowoomba instead. Officers injured after four cop cars were rammed by a stolen truck. As is a shit towns of Australia tradition, every week a car hits a cop car and people get in trouble. No shit. And it's, I'd like to. I'd like to point out. You, you, uh, I made a joke, and I, I feel like it wasn't appropriate. Not, not okay. sorry, not appreciated enough. I, I want to make the joke again. Okay. But Queensland makes a list a lot, right? Yeah. Just for just general, just crazy shit. Queensland happening. antics. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, they're filming the new Mortal Kombat in Queensland. So I was like, well, I'm just gonna just use found footage, obviously. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that'll, that's, that's some great fights, some fatalities you would never expect. Good stunt there, everybody truck running into some cop cars. That'd be cool. Chuck that in the movie. Um, oh, we man. have a uh, number one this week is taken by Western Australia. So we've got Ooh. Rockingham, West Australia. Uh, dickhead and eight year old son of Dickhead bash a 91 year old man for no reason. For no so, reason. I know this story. Uh, this actually happened two years ago, but they, he was charged this week. 
So a eight-year-old uh, and his father were at a car park. The old man was in the car next to him in the passenger seat about to go because they were leaving. Uh, the eight-year-old just started punching the 90, 91-year-old man. And then his dad got involved, punched the 91-year-old man a lot. And then they, the, the father and his two children, those two kids, got into a taxi and left. The, when the taxi arrived at their house, uh, he bashed on the, the car as well and caused damage to the car and then was abusing the taxi driver. And he was, fi- he was fined 700 bucks for the car damage as well. And uh, this week, the father, who was 37, was sent to jail for two years. So it took a long time to get the sentencing. He was but, high um, or something, right? That, that was not in the article, but probably. But also, did you say eight-year-old? Eight-year-old. What there is was going no on? word in the article about the eight-year-old. Is there no that. good toys for them to play anymore? Why are they out bashing people and robbing stores? I mean, <laughs> at eight, on? I was definitely pretending to be a horse on this article for us. <laughs> God, I think I was. Bloody hell, what's wrong with these kids? I think I was watching the Transformers Jesus. the movie for the seventieth time when I was eight years old. It's like, what, what's going on? I think I, I think I was eating mud, maybe. Definitely, <laughs> I mean, okay, we, we could kind of say that if the, the father acted in the way that he did, then the child has probably not got a great home life and has learned some terrible things. So I hope that kids get That's my point. Is... Do they need better toys? <laughs> no, they need better parents. That's yeah, what they I mean. need oh, better shit. parents. He <laughs> needs better parents. I don't think um, you can get them from Kmart. That kid needs an upgrade. <laughs> no. So that's, uh, that is Shit Towns Australia wrap up this week of the, the weekly news. Next oh, week damn. we'll probably see some stuff about the Sydney fire that is all over the news. But uh, we will see. Sydney fire. Everything on Shit Towns is usually a week delayed. So. I'd like also like to point out with the Sydney fire thing, the thing that tickled me the most, and uh, we'll talk about the the video that I posted up in our like a little topic thing to talk about. Um, it's very contrast compared to the last conversation we had about Sydney, about how Sydney was the best in the world. Uh, this video literally opens with another reason why Sydney's the worst place in the world. <laughs> but uh, for those who don't know, there was a very large fire right in the middle of fucking Sydney, a uh, large heritage listed. Surrey Hills. Used to be a hat, hat factory or hat something. Factory? Yeah. I think is what they said originally. Well, it was heritage listed, and then it was just like an uh, office dwelling for a while, and then apparently it's been abandoned, and you know, sort of homeless people, rough sleeping people, been sleeping using it, and then they apparently it was meant to be getting developed, and and burst into flames. Essentially, um, we'll find out more info as they find the children that went running from the scene. They, they're saying it's a one of a de- once in a decade fire. It was that bad. Uh, going by the topics that we've had today, I'm assuming they're six and seven years old. Kids <laughs> these days. <laughs> In between six and ten. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the thing that the thing that really was just the icing on the cake. There's a guy who parked his work ute was out front of the building when it collapsed, or part of it collapsed, onto his vehicle. Total write off. Still got a parking ticket. Not allowed to park there. Not that you're allowed to go in that area Typical at the city moment. city of Sydney, honestly. <laughs> I gave him a parking ticket. <laughs> oh, fucking Sydney, man. <laughs> it's just, it's Definitely never... not the best place to live. Probably not the best place to live. It really, really isn't. It's a hole. It's a People hole. eating bin chickens, bricks falling on the cars from burning buildings, 10-year-olds burning the buildings. Uh yeah, that's about it. I was looking back at the list to see where else New South Wales was mentioned this week. It's just the bin chicken guy. So it's just that, it's, and it's his second time on the list. It's like fucking. Yeah. <laughs> how do you do it? How do you do it? Uh, but yeah, we'll probably get more info on that next week. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I suppose the other, only other thing that came up, which again we don't didn't really get much info to it, but the uh, Red Bull Australia were running a Fortnite competition. Um, you know, similar to like a Dream Hack, I guess. But more esports for that. Um, got evacuated because some kid posted a fucking bomb threat on Twitter, which was lovely of them to do. Um, but yeah, Red Bull had to respond and they had to evacuate the event. Um, get everyone out of the building, sweep the building back in. Turns out it was a bomb threat, whatever. Be sure yeah. they they tracked down who it was already as well. Or at least they know what accounts and stuff it was. Yeah. A kid tweeted a picture of a bomb and a picture of a handgun, definitely not taken from Google Images and something else. And the picture of a bomb has like a Nokia strap to it. So. Yeah, he commented on stuff as well. Twitter was very quick to yeet this guy out of the internet. Yeah, it's um, good. Acting fast. But they can't risk that sort of shit, unfortunately. So they had no to way. ruin the event. And, you know, again, I hope the fucking. Yeah, 
probably some nine year old. <laughs> I say kids these days. Kids these days, man. They got. Fucking... I just so I, w- I went to the Twitter account and um, because those tweets were deleted, but there's photos of the cops at his door. <laughs> like the Austra- it is it is like the Aussie cops. So this I think is the legit account. And um, oh, the yeah, no, it's yeah, yeah. It's he, he was found. What just I what, last lord. thing I read, but they they've they've kept it pretty low. Um, yeah, obviously not a very nice thing. Yeah, people no. dumb shit like that all the time. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it's uh, it's Sydney doing great. Doing Yay! Great. <laughs> um, but yeah, otherwise, this, what other news have we got? The only other thing that I, I saw, which was probably the dumbest thing that I've seen on the internet all week, is uh, it's actually a husband and wife both got kick streaming tattoos. Not small ones, not like one on the ankle or something like that, like a little K or anything like that. Nah, full kick with the logo right down in your forearm. Like some that'll be really expensive to laser off in a couple of years. I just kept thinking to myself, Mixer died and that was Microsoft. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I just like, want to say, I don't care what you get on your bo- tattooed on your body, but the tattoo quality itself is shit. The color yeah, on the kick poor. logo, it's patchy as fuck. The line work, terrible. If you're going to get a shit tattoo, at least get the shit tattoo done right. All right. Well, hang on. Let's let's look at the audience and the person that's doing it. They literally want to get kick streaming as a tattoo. All right. They're not going to a decent tattoo artist. No, probably the cousin that's, that's, doing it out of their fucking shed or something. On the know? dining room table <laughs> with a couple of beers. It's, that's probably what it is because that's what it looks like. <laughs> but the, so, so I was like interested then. I thought, was there someone dumb enough on Mixer to get a Mixer tattoo? No, and then do they still have it now that this fucking platform got yeeted? No, there wasn't. I couldn't find anything. Oh, I, I, I definitely went looking. Um, I no one was people, that dedicated. People would have got the tattoo and bragged about it. Like, there's no way that they didn't post pictures on the internet. So I don't believe that there was one. Which then brings you back to the question of, look at these kind of people. <laughs> these are the kind of people that are like, I don't know. It's just such a weird, almost cult mentality. Like, I'm going to be a kick streamer for life. Like, no one's going to be a kick streamer for life. It's actually the, the interesting thing, the conversation that I've seen a lot lately is from people either my age or you know, a little bit older, you know, from my kind of generation, I guess, who are, have been in content creation for 10 years. And now they're like, well, what am I doing next? I'm not doing this forever. You know, I need to either get a bump or stability or you, know, you can't rely on Twitch being here every day. There's people that literally you know, founded their, their influence on Twitter and like Elon Musk can nuke that into existence at any point because he kind of tries already. So people are like, what do I do next? What do we, how do I transition into something? Am I going to go work at Kmart? Am I going to work at McDonald's? What am I doing? There's this whole conversation of I spent 10 years doing content creation. What's the, the next thing? And a lot of people obviously will go community manager or, you know, work in sort of the game industry in some way. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting kind of point. Like, these people, you're not going to be a kick streamer. If you're 18 now and you're streaming on kick, you're not going to be a kick streamer when you're 50. You are going to have a kick streaming tattoo though. So good luck with that. Um, See, it raises something that I think is important that if you're a content creator and, um, you know, you're, you're just trying to grow and everything like that, please don't ignore your IRL career. You should actually try and build something that will keep you sustained whilst you're doing your streaming and content creation. Yeah, Because yeah. content creation itself is not sustainable <laughs> for a long period of time unless you're on, you, or you, unless you own every single platform that you're on, really. And you don't. That's yeah, unless you own the website you're putting your content on, then you are left your entire career in someone else's hands. Yeah. It's as simple as that. That's why you look at someone like Linus, who has Float Plane, uh, if you look at someone like Rooster Teeth, they've got their own website and their own hosting mm-hmm. platform. You know, they they know, you know, uh, fucking Corridor Crew, same thing. Yep. Yep. It's, they they know big. that they can't rely on being it. And like Linus got hacked. They, Co- Corridor Crew got hacked. Corridor Crew got hacked. Did you know gaming got hacked? They lost half a million subscribers. And they, they like, and they, now they they literally had to post a video going, if you're seeing this, check if you're subscribed because you might not be anymore. You don't know because to them, they would have seen, they're going to be like, hey, why am I following crypto bros and would have unfollowed it? And then like they eventually got their their account back and changed the name back. But it was like, yeah, it was, mm-hmm. you can't rely on that. So it's it's about I- uh, you need to be smart about it. The content creation yes. as a career is difficult. 
and and it's not stable and it's the same as anything in film and tv to be honest it's why i why i kind of avoided the whole industry it's yeah. because i need i'd like to know where my next meal's coming from <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's simple as that and um yeah, it's like and get a if job. If you are making or, any money through content creation, make sure you do your taxes properly. Tax time is coming up. Yes. You don't, you've got to be smart. This goes into being smart. There's a, if you go to the ATO, particularly for Australian people that do tax, they actually have a whole thing on influencers and earning money, stuff like that. Obviously, it's big now with, you know, platforms like OnlyFans and stuff like that, mm. making mega bucks. Um, and there's a, there's, a, there's a straight up question there is like, is your making money on your online a is it you know is it a hobby because then it's not taxable or is it an income and that goes into detail and all that sort of shit there and mm. and the the interesting thing is that you know you might not make any money but they gave you three flat screen TVs or whatever uh, that is taxable <laughs> that is an income yes. getting paid yeah. in TVs is an income contra is income. <laughs> So maybe make sure you're also only accepting Contra that you uh, really like and really want. <laughs> oh, damn, Don't I accepted those 1,000 Udis. Use code Zombies Love Bacon in checkout. Now you got to pay taxes. <laughs> um, yeah, just just be smart about it. What you're doing with with content creation and yeah, and I, th- I think it's always good to have a plan B and, and sort of what and your you actual do. career. Have a career. Be a be a good. Yeah. Don't be don't be like yo man. I'm homeless. I got no money. I fucking need money. Don't put all your eggs in the kick basket. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I can't eat this week, but check out my RGB, bro. <laughs> yeah, and I know buy some food are like first. That. <laughs> buy the food you, first. <laughs> you don't want to be like the the forty year old still living with your parents who's streaming on Kick every night or Twitch every night. Yeah, or don't whatever if you can't afford night, food, don't get a Kick adult. tattoo. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just be smart. All right, oh, youngins. Man. Any any young people listening to that, which are to this, which I highly doubt. I don't think that's our target demographic. What do you mean? Um, do, don't. Like Shout out to Belgium. Belgium's still park, watching. But... Belgium's still listening to this podcast. We love you, Belgium. Belgium you're implying that all Belgium are children, which is not true. Belgium's all children. No. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how demographics work. Just your, your career development is actually important, and your career development may not necessarily lay within entertainment or within gaming, and you might have to do something else on the side, and that's fine. You may have to have content creation as a hobby. Don't yeah, it's, I think the important thing is, and, and talking from someone who I've literally been uh, the person that hires people, like I'm doing the hiring and the firing, right? And we had, a, we had a resume come across and they listed their only job experience as being on Twitch. They were a partnered streamer who was on Twitch, who streamed constantly. Um, that's all their job experience they had. No one else in the room knew what Twitch was. No one knew what they'd been doing. Like, hey, oh, let me call the resident nerd. Hey, Eladi, <laughs> get over here. What do you think? Eladi, have you heard of this Twitch thing? <laughs> well, I was, the, I was the guy. I'm like, oh, well, Twitch is, it's not easy. Like, if he's making a living off this. Anyway, and this is a true story, and it's not anyone you know because they don't do content anymore. But I'm like, he's probably, like, I showed him. So I brought up, open up Twitch, and he was streaming. He was live at the time. I'm like, well, this is him. And I showed him, and he was sitting there, baked. Fucking doing vapes in this huge smoke cloud, playing fucking, uh, what's that one that's like you you do the the Civ simulator, um, fuck, uh, it's like a space one where you have all the different people. Anyway, he's playing his game and he's sitting there and he's 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 fucking Rimworld. Rimworld. He's playing Rimworld, and he's just vaping. He's like, fuck, man, I fucking fuck you, fucking assholes, you fucking don't say assholes. Blah, blah. And I'm like, nah, like, mate. And the guy's like, you want us to hire him? I'm like, yeah. No, probably not. <laughs> Okay, that goes him. to the next thing. Don't, <laughs> don't put your Twitch stream on your resume unless you're actually like he didn't. professional and proud of he yourself. He didn't. It was an easy okay. Google. It was an easy Google. Yeah. But what, what, how, how else are you meant to do it? <clears throat> like he literally, his only job that he put on there was that he worked at, worked at Twitch is what he said. But he had no references because he couldn't. He had nothing. He had no, nothing there. If, if, you work, if you want to do full-time content creation, excellent. Get a part-time job. Yes as simple as that have some sort of experience some sort of experience and i'm i've like i've literally had like i i'm i've been working since i was 14 like i just i've never left the workforce yeah and there's people that i know that got to like 21 whatever and they're like oh it was fine i didn't need money you know i you know lived in the city parents paid for most things it was all fine it's like yeah cool now you are an adult that requires a minimum adult wage 
and no experience, where at least when you're 15, they pay you peanuts and expect to get monkeys. Now they expect you to be a fully functioning adult with no experience. But yeah. they're not going to hire you. They're going to hire the 15-year-old. He's $5 an hour cheaper. It's and you might be thinking, like, I don't want to, like, get started in retail or hospitality or stuff like that. That's experience. And I started with retail, did a little a few years of that, and then I, now I've got an office job, like a tech job. Yeah, well, And I, mean, I uh, refer back to my retail experience, and that's how I got it. Yeah, and like I, I, I'm a firm believer in if you can't find work and stuff like that, if you can't even get a job, you know, a Kmart or whatever, then fucking volunteer. Get something on your resume that says that you don't sit on the couch all day. You know, even you if you just, do sit on the couch, just lie about it. You got to like have a, something. You know, it's just if you. I mean, you, you say that you're a carer or something like that. Like just something. You need to do something anyway. I like because I was working part time, didn't have a full time job, so I was a full time. I got a full-time volunteer job and I did that for a year. Didn't get paid. I got paid nothing. I had no money. But the experience and the connections that I made through that got me everywhere. Like yeah. the, 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 everything else was, it was like I met people and they knew people that knew people and they, you know, and they like, oh, man, what are your job what are you trying to get into or what do you want to work in, whatever. That's it. It's not, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, people, it's opened so many doors. Like, I, the only reason why I ever worked at Prime TV or Channel 7 was because I knew people. That's it. We knew a person that knew a person that knew a person. And then they told that person that I was going to come in. And I went in and said hello. And then I started working there. It's, it's, so, it's so, you need to get out there, is the point. And uh, I think there's too many content creators that are sort of living in their bubble, doing their own thing, thinking, you know, if I keep grinding every day, I'm going to get these numbers up to the point where I get Mr. Beast money. Well, no one gets Mr. Beast money. And, uh, it's, it's full and don't stop. get any social media logos tattooed on your body. Don't, don't do don't, it. Don't commit to it. Not nothing. worth it. Yeah, no. It's, it's, if, but if you're going to do it, get a good tattoo. Get a Zombies Love Baker one. Yeah. Yeah, fuck <laughs> it. All right. I'll do it. No, I haven't got a tattoo. I haven't got any tattoos. Tattoos are expensive. I'd, I need to spend the money they on are, food. They're all expensive. <laughs> the butterfly on my wrist is $150. Yeah, but you know what butterflies mean. What does it mean? Don't worry about it. <laughs> you no, can look it up it later. No, nah, look it, it up. Mean, look it up. It's fine. I don't want to say it out loud. You look it up later. Tay, what does it mean? <laughs> I don't know. I it's was it's just a laughing. TikTok thing. It's a TikTok thing. <laughs> it's it's fine. <clears throat> it's definitely a thing. Don't worry about it. Anyway, uh, we're pretty much up on time. So, hey, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I've been streaming all day, and then we stream the podcast as well, and I'm kind of cooked, which is great. But also... The uh, we'll be back next week and the week after that, and we're also on obviously YouTube and on Amazon and Spotify. Stuff like that. We haven't had many reviews or anything like that. So if you get a chance to review us or even leave a comment on the YouTube video or anything, that we are amongst the first. Uh, we do get a lot of bots who do come up and say, "Hello, would you like me to give you listen?" Like, yes. I do. Yes, give listen. <laughs> bot. listen bot. Yes, um, give listen. It's 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 yeah. It's, it's we're not getting packs matching tattoos. Let's get that idea. Okay, I'm reading chat. You know, it's <laughs> I, I, it's always interesting. I actually did a post, and we might do another post. I did a post from the Team OC thing, which was, tell us what your day job is, content creators, and it was like one of the most interactive thing because people never actually think about the fact that. Most of the people that you're watching on Twitch, like they have a nine to five or they, they have a different, you know, in a different life, you know. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting and it's good. You should always, you should always have a plan B. People be like, what, what do you do for work? I'm like customer success manager. And like, okay, what does that mean? What the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm like, I hold business hands, make them give me more money. I make them success. Success. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a wanky term. Success. Business success manager. Brings in the money though. I manage your success, baby. <laughs> anyway, we need to wrap things up. Shelby, you streaming? What are you doing this week? You going to do your cooking stream this week? What are you doing? What are you uh, doing? I got to make pressures on at some point. I I raised eight hundred and fifty seven dollars for charity, and uh, we got to do twenty four hours stream and a cooking stream off the back of that. So I'm going to tweet when twenty four hours of cooking. Tw that would be oh hilarious. yeah. I Jesus Christ, you're doing the we'd dishes. Be having meals. <laughs> um, it would just be me doing dishes to like pass the time. To be honest, you know, if you but did that, this is what I'd do. I'd say I'd set up a little camera here at the desk, and I'll be like taste cam, and I'll just eat the food. <laughs> Honestly, actually, that is something we should do if we do a cooking stream. Is you're on taste cam? Taste cam. You're right. I think we've got an idea now. Um, if you want cinnamon <laughs> rolls brought to your table so you can eat them, 
Because honestly, and I've talked about this, I've, I've had surgery to make my stomach smaller. I can't really eat much food. So I'll need somebody to taste test, right? So I'll put you on camera Yo. and you can just eat the food for me. That I Hell put yeah. Can I Hell put, yeah. Can I put in requests? <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah, I'll take requests. Why not? I'll, cook, I'll get lots of stuff. Hell um, yeah. But yeah, I'm going to do a cooking stream. So we're sorting that out, obviously. Um, and I ha I didn't get quite to my goal, which was $1,000. But that was my second goal anyway. So I guess I got to my goal. Uh, but raising money for Game on Cancer. Uh, but you can find me on shellbunny underscore on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Instagram's where I post like events and stuff we're going to. And Twitter is where I post my thoughts <laughs> and feelings. Shelby um, cooks then, a bin chicken. <laughs> I'm not cooking a bin chicken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's but, I'll bring it down, I know where I can get some, though. But, um, uh, now I've lost my train of thought. You can follow me at Shelbunny on Twitch as well if you want to see me cook a bin chicken. <laughs> Don't do that. You'll be on shit town. I actually like bin chickens. I've petted them before. I'm that person who pets pigeons and like plays with like uh like seagulls and stuff outside and the lardy noses. And I've I've pet a bin chicken before. They're kind of cool. So be careful. You know, some people think you're trying to take them home and cook them. After now, you've said on the internet. You said on the internet you're gonna cook it. I will not eat it. I promise. Too late. Take it out of context. Tame. What are you up to, man? Uh, I'm actually trying to set set up a setup to do some canvases and stream it. I don't know if you can see this, but some I did art? a Mario. Hey! hey! That's cool. I'm still doing it, but yeah, I'm just trying to set something up. So yeah, man. I saw, I saw, some, saw, I saw, work. A, saw a streamer was doing some um, painting stuff, and I'm like, oh, man, that'd be fun. I haven't done one. I haven't done a painting stream in years. Yeah, I'm not very should. good at it, but it's fucking, it's just, it's chill, man. <laughs> I like I like painting. I should should definitely do it though. Like just get a setup. That's the way to go. Yeah, trying to okay. work something then, out. Then you just whack on some tunes and away you go. It's good shit. Um, and if anyone's wondering what I'm doing, I'm playing Elden Ring. That's it. And then after that, he's playing Persona for many. I, many I, I, hours. Don't worry. By the next podcast, I'll still be playing Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will. I'll be still playing it forever, and I'll still be going the wrong way, and everyone will be doing it. But I, well, I think. I think the I think the uh, the the general consensus, and this is the way it's going to work, is that I think I know enough people that have played Elden Ring that they can just kind of help me, and maybe we can get it done a little bit quicker. So that'd be pretty good, I think. Mm. <laughs> Who knows? We'll let you know next week whether or not we've finished Elden Ring. But thanks for hanging out, everybody. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Leave a comment, do a review, do something, messages. Eat a bin chicken and tell us what it tastes like. Don't do that. Yeah.